it to the lamb that was slain. <laughs> Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I love that. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And glory to the lamb. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's enter in and worship today. The builders are building again. We begin the prophetic word. The Lord gave me a number of years ago. The builders must start building again because he said he's activated his promises, his provision. And these things are coming to pass. As we begin to build, there's innately a blessing in it. The builders, this begins our study of Nehemiah. Oh, how much do I love Nehemiah? Woo! Giant pioneer and forerunner, Nehemiah the cupbearer of a Persian king that went back to the city where his father's tombs had been desecrated and he rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. The walls of Jerusalem. it's very powerful. And this is how I fight my battles, in his presence, with his presence, and through his presence. There's a table you prepared for me in the presence of my enemy. It's your body, your blood you shed for me. And this is how I fight my. He prepared a table in the presence of our enemy. Sing it again. There's a table you prepared for me in the presence of my enemy. It's your body, Lord, your blood you shed for me, and this is how I fight my battles in and through and with your presence. This is how I fight my battles. Check it out now, pre-chorus. And I believe you've overcome, and I will lift my song of praise for what you've done. And I believe you've overcome, and I will lift my song up, praise for what you've done here. You guys ready? This is how I fight, and this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battle. Oh my God, this is how I fight my battles. This is how in your presence, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my, it's in your presence, Lord, with your presence. I'm living in your presence, living in your presence. It's how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. I live in your presence. I live in your presence, fighting my battles in the power of you. Your declared victory, Lord. You have a declared victory. I'm walking in it now. The victory of the Son of God on the cross and on resurrection day by the glory of the Father. Check it out. In a valley, I know that you're with me. And surely, your goodness and your mercy follows me. Check it. So my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. What were they? So my weapons are praise and thanks. Do it again. So my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. This is how I fight my battles I 
I believe the word. We believe the word. We have faith in God. And we believe. The author of this song said, And I believe you've overcome it. I will lift my song of praise for what you've done, my God. And I believe you've overcome and I will live my song of praise for what you've done. Yeah. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is I'm, I'm in your presence, God. To and with it in your presence, there it is. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded by a bunch of enemies, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. surrounded but I'm sure you wrap around presence it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by your wrap around presence yeah it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, yeah. Your wraparound presence, Lord. Your wraparound presence is on my life. It's in my life. Your wraparound presence, yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
Koinonia Sunday. Tell me what nation you're from. My favorite worship song can, is worthy of it all. And we're going to coin a knee Sunday. <laughs> this is where the royal priesthood is all coming. Argentina, Africa, underground church, South Korea, North, a worship leader from North Korea. Could you imagine it? Oh, my God. A worship leader from China. The kingdom of priests, they're all coming from every tribe. with the sword in his mouth. Woo! Let the fear of the Lord be known by every man, every woman, every teenager, every child. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Let's sing it out, you guys. Ready? All you. Come on, somebody. Day and night, night and day, the incense arise. Break 
the button off then Holly if you want to <laughs> we're from you are all things <laughs> to you are all things you deserve the glory pretty funny I broke my cursor worthy of it seeing the glory of the risen King. Wow. In Jesus' name. Wow. That was something. The builders are building again. I'm going to talk to you now. You can open to Nehemiah 1. I'm not doing the, starting the full narration today with Miss Carla. I brought something else. It is the prophetic word. The Lord gave me a number of years ago sitting in the prayer room. So listen real closely. For two and a half days, pretty much on the hour, every hour, the Lord said, Kent, the builders were building and they were doing a great job. I want you to think about it. I'm going to say it multiple times. The builders are, were building and they were doing a great job. And I was both heartened and encouraged and then I was somewhat disappointed because this word, the builders were building and they were doing a good job. We got a good rating from the living God. We didn't, he didn't say the builders were building and they're doing a, a, a really poor job. He didn't say they were doing a fair job or a mediocre job. We got a good rating from the Lord. The builders were building, Ken, and they were doing a good job. The problem with the sentence is word, W-E-R-E, is past tense, that they stopped building. The builders were building. They were doing a great job. They're building in the kingdom. They're building in the natural. But were means, past tense, they stopped building. Oh, my. My mom said, Kent, you're my why, baby. Why? Why? You're two. You're three. You're four. Why? Because you were curious to have knowledge about everything. And so I started saying, okay, Lord, if you're going to pound me with this sentence, which was good, I, I receive it. The builders were building. They were doing a good job. 
I started saying, why, Lord, why, why? So after a couple of days of that phrase, that statement, he gave me the answer, the why baby, well, the why adult now. I said, Lord, why, why did they stop building? Here's what he said. The builders, this is section two of the prophetic word. He said, the builders stopped building Ken, because of hard circumstances and artificial ceilings. I went, whoa, God. The builders, he, he told me why. He said, hard circumstances came against him. And pretty much any believer after a while, if they don't get a release from that or grow their faith or stay in the word, they get decked. He said that builders can't, I'm, I'm answering your question straight up, Ken. The builders stopped building because of hard circumstances and artificial ceilings. This was right after the downturn of 08 and 09 into 2010. That's the first part of this word when it came to me. And I got hard, hard, hard circumstances, no problem. This begins, by the way, our study of Nehemiah. As we go through the rest of the fall into the winter here, thanks, we're going to be doing the book, and the, the builders are going to, you're going to start building. Every one of us are going to start building again in the spirit and in the natural. But the second phrase, in the second phrase, when he said, it was hard circumstances, I got that. But I said, oh, that darn devil. Um, the, the artificial ceilings, I thought it was demonic. That, you know, the, the kingdom of darkness had come in, in its power and oppress people and put in artificial ceilings. And the Lord said, oh, no, it wasn't the devil. It was themselves. I went, what, Lord? He goes, oh, no, they, they became unworthy in their own eyes of even my grace and my love. And they installed a far, a, this far and no further over their head. They, these were, he was talking about his people installed an artificial seeing and said no higher because I've goofed up and I've goofed up for the for 101st time I'm not worthy I'm, I'm just not, I'm going to stay right here it was an artificial ceiling and when I saw it in the spirit he said if they would just begin to praise and worship me lift their hands they'd break right through the artificial ceiling so number one the builders were building and they were doing a good job Number two, the builders stopped building because of hard circumstances and artificial ceilings. Listen really close now, because this is number three. He said, you've got to tell my people, Kent, right now. The builders must start building again immediately because I removed all delay off of my promises, my, prov my provision." and the prophetic word that I put over their lives. Hear this again. He said, tell my body, Kent, the body of Christ, the builders, they must start building again immediately because I have removed all delay and all obstruction to my provision and my promises and my prosperity. The builders are going to start building again because Jesus said so. And he concluded it with, if any of my people, when they hear this word, start building, even the roof, repair the roof on your doghouse in your backyard. If you start building, he said, there's an immediate release of blessing, of provision, prosperity, and the promise of the Lord. Wow. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? The builders, so as we get now, this is the prelude. Before we do chapter 1 and go through all 13 chapters of Nehemiah, I just did my section, Carla. Um, oh, actually, I've got to read verse 1, and then Carla does the heart response. So I'm in verse 1. I'm not. We're not doing the whole narration, but this will help you understand what Nehemiah, the, the greatest builder of all to me, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hekeliah. This is what happened. While I was in Susa, the capital, I was in the palace or the citadel that Hannah and I, one of my brothers, literally a biological brother of Nehemiah came and some of the men from Judah came with him. 
And I asked them concerning A, the Jews who had escaped and had survived the captivity, and B, about Judah and Jerusalem. And here's what my brothers told me. They said the remnant, the remnant there in the province and in Judah and Jerusalem who survived the captivity are in great distress and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem, I'm sorry to tell you, Nehemiah, it's fully broken down. It's broken down. And the gates of Jerusalem have been burned by fire. And I put a note, I want you to parallel this with present day America and the collapse of ethics, the collapse of morals and of godly values. Again, the collapse of our ethics and principles, righteous principles and morals and godly values. Nehemiah, the great builder, he had a concern. He had grief for the Hebrew people and the ones who had escaped, survived the captivity. And this is what happened. Verse 4, Carla. Nehemiah's heartfelt, heartfelt response. Verse 4, starting in verse 4. When I heard these words, I sat down and I wept. I mourned for days. And I was fasting and praying before the Lord the God of heaven. I said, I beseech you, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who preserves the covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you now, day and night on behalf of the sons of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the sons of wow. Israel, which we have sinned against you, and I, I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word which you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me, keep my commandments and do them, though those of you who have been scattered were in the most remote part of the heavens. We'll gather them from there and we'll bring them to the place where I have chosen to cause my name to dwell. Okay, guys, so the first thing the Lord gave me for this teaching, our entrance into the book of Nehemiah, he said, you have to tell my people, the builders have to start building again, but this is how they're going to do it. You must return to greater times and volumes of presence-based worship our way into the strength to start building again. He said, you've got to return to greater times in my presence and volumes, spending an hour or two in my presence and let me speak to you. And Lord, we're looking to you for your times of refreshing that will help us have the light and the clarity for our current directions and destinations that you've set before us. Time spent in the presence of the Lord. Three things happen. I believe that we're going to return, as Nehemiah did, to prayer and fasting and deep realms of worship. Returning to prayer and fasting as a people and we'll see the results of time spent in his presence. It's threefold. Here is my fresh oil anointing for you. Here is my fresh oil anointing for you. I've got strength and energy you've never seen before. Strength and energy. 
that will open every door, every shut door in my presence. Number one, fresh oil anointing for strength and divine energy. You'll have a fresh oil anointing daily, a fresh oil anointing daily. I said fresh oil anointing. This is number one. We have to return to deeper worship, to times of prayer and fasting. And he said, number one, you receive a fresh oil anointing every day. You'll have strength and energy to run along the pathway. I have set for you fresh oil anointing is A, B, he said, you'll get light for vision, you'll get light for vision and for clarity. A lot of believers are in confusion right now, but he said, if you'll seek me, light and vision, light and vision and clarity to know what to do and how to go deeper in his word. He said, I give you light for vision and clarity. I give you light for vision and clarity to know what to do and where to go, how to go deeper in my word. Light for vision and clarity. Light for vision and clarity. A fresh oil anointing is A, for strength and energy, divine energy. B, is I will give, you come into my presence and I'll give you new light and vision and clarity to know what to do. And C is C. C, the letter C. A greater confidence. A greater confidence. A greater confidence to move more and deeper in the things of my Holy Spirit. You'll have a greater confidence to move and go deeper in the things of my Holy Spirit in my kingdom. A greater... When you spend time in His presence, He said, I'll give you, I will release a greater confidence to move more and deeper in the things of the Holy Spirit. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're going to move and go deeper in the things of your... So how will the builders start building again? This is our entry, the prelude into the book of Nehemiah. He said, you're going to return to greater times and greater volume of time in his presence. Fresh oil anointing of strength and energy. Light and vision for clarity. Wow. To know what to do and how to go deeper in his word. And the last one was confidence. He's releasing confidence. A growth of confidence to move more and deeper in the things of his Holy Spirit. And we go to the scripture that tips us over into the fullness of the provision. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, wow, declares what? the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I know my thoughts for you. To give you hope in your final outcome. To give you an expected end. For I know the thoughts which I think about you, saith the Lord. The thoughts of peace and not of torment, so that I shall give you a good ending. Oh my God. I know what I'm planning for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you hope and a good future. Two, believe his word and promises. Keep it ever before your eyes. Now I'm going to pray over the end of this year and 2022. Yes. Father God, yeah. so much of your body is hurting right now in despair and not seeing you anywhere. 
They see nothing but destruction. They don't see builders building. They see everything being torn down. Right. Everything concerning faith and righteousness and goodness. It's kingdom of darkness is coming against it with all of its force right now. And that's all we see. Unless. Right. Unless. Yeah. We're looking at you. Unless we're looking at your promises, your provisions, your expected end for us, God. That you have something that you're planning to turn around. That we can hang on our plans, the plans that you have to prosper us and to not, not to harm us. To give us a hope and a future, we must believe that the future is right around the corner and that we as the body of Christ have the authority to tear down the evil, to bring it to a halt, to say no more because you said, Jesus, that the gates of hell would not prevail against us. And that's all many people see and they're so discouraged. The world is so discouraged, thinking it's all over. And especially looking to America to say, well, as America goes, so goes the world. Well, we're, we're taking a stand in America. Your church is saying, no more. We won't take it anymore. We push back the kingdom of darkness. We say 2022, the end of this year in 2022, we're going to bring more light and more vision than we've had in decades, God. As we get our eyes off of ourselves, wow. as we get our eyes off of bad circumstances, as we raise the ceiling to understand that God is saying we need to build at a time when building looks impossible. Right. And if God's called you to do something in the midst of the impossible, just begin because then you're a forerunner and others will get their faith yeah. built on, and, and elevated to the place where they can move into what God has building for them. Man, I could give you a testimony. God called Kent and I to build a house in 1980 when interest rates were 24%. The prime interest rate was 24%, and everybody around us thought we were insane. Literally insane. When we got ready to turn over our construction loan to a mortgage, the going rate was 16%. 16%. We managed to get 12, and the, the banker that was, that was closing our loan just fascinated by that. How did you do that? So we got to witness to her that we knew God. 12 was the best that we could do right now. Nobody would even go to a bank for a 12% loan. So just do it. That's all I'm saying. God is saying build. You're, you're called to build something. We're builders. We're not, te we're not tearing oh, things so down. Good. We're building up the righteousness of God in our community. Taking a stand against evil and what we see is the enemy's plan to take out humankind altogether. Not just the church, but everybody. Satan hates us because of how God created us and who we're created to be. So just continue to take a stand and to pray and to look on the good things. To put your eyes on the good things of God and what God can do have a vision of what God can do in the middle yeah. of all of this. Not what the enemy is doing, but what God can do because he's getting ready to move. We hear about revival happening in places, different places, and, and, and a great awakening of the church. So just continue to pray and put your eyes on Jesus and that beautiful plan that he has for your life because he plans to prosper you and he's not going to harm you and he plans to give you a hope and a 
wonderful future. In Jesus' name. Wow. I left a spot in the road and Carla took it. She was driving 90 and that was awesome. Because see, when I the builders will start building again. He said, I have removed all delay, any opposition to my provision, my prosperity and promises. Go build it, build it. And I continue now with three other translations, well, four of Jeremiah 29, 11, because it's hooked to the builders. And this is unusual what I put together today for this uh, stream and our narration. But it keeps going on Jeremiah 29, 11. I want you to listen really close. For I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you, says the Lord. Who was it? Uh, says the Lord. I've got thoughts of peace and not of evil. That's the devil. To give you a hope and a future. I have a hope and a future. And this translation says, I know what I'm doing. Oh my God. This sounds like a teacher or a principal, but he said, I am the teacher and the principal. He said, I know what I'm doing. Personalize it. Put your name, Kent. I know what I'm doing. He said, I have it all planned out, plans to take care of you and not to abandon you, plans to give you the future you hope for. For I know what I, get ready for this, this is the Miles Coverdale Bible from 1535. Check this now. They brought it out of Old English, and here's what it says. For I know, the Lord says, I know what I've designed for you. I'm going to say it three times. He said, I've already designed a destiny for you. Saith the Lord, my thoughts are to give you peace and not trouble, that you may have hope again. See, this is why Jeremiah 29, 11 needs to be paired with Nehemiah. That's what the Lord, I, I said, oh my God, what is it? He says, Kent, they got to know I have a plan. I have a, I know what I've designed for you and no one can interrupt it unless you let them. And I think it's a complete Jewish Bible says, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says Adonai. I have plans for your peace. It actually means I have planned for my shalom covering to be covering you. What? He has a my shalom covering is what it says. That is, I'm giving you completeness and soundness. Isn't that awesome? He said, I'm giving you completeness and soundness. And so I pray a simple prayer. Show us the heaven's blueprint for our life, Lord. Open our eyes to see what you've designed already in glory, in praise, in your presence, and in this life. You have a designated design. Just show us exactly what that is. Now, I want you to go to Nehemiah 2, because I want to finish. This is the prelude for us studying. Studying Carla at Nehemiah 2. We got stuck on the bottom there. And it came about in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes that wine was brought before him. And I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad in his presence. So the king said to me, why is your face sad, though you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of heart. Then I was very much afraid. Wow. I said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, wow. lies desolate and its gates have been consumed by fire? Then the king said to me, what would you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. I said to the king, if it please the king and if your servant has found favor before you, send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, yeah. that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, wow. how long will your journey be wow. and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me 
and I gave him a definite time. And everybody's saying, that's a miracle. It is truly a miracle. In the Old Testament, in Nehemiah 2, there's no way. He's a Persian king, buddy. I mean, he is powerful. But he said, uh, see, you weren't allowed to go into the presence of the king with a sad face. Not allowed. Because uh, you could die of doing that. But he kept it off. I'm assuming that, um, this is my guess, the supposition, that Nehemiah kept the sadness off his face for a few days, maybe seven to ten days. And the king says, Nehemiah, you're not sick, but there's something wrong with you. Oh, I see. It's nothing but sadness of heart. Even the Persian king perceived it. And he said, well, what do you need, Nehemiah? If, if the, the place of your father's tombs has been desecrated, he goes, well, could I pray? <laughs> I find that amazing where Nehemiah said, um, hey, king, oh, live forever, but I'm going to go pray if that's okay. He goes, okay, go ahead and go pray. <laughs> This is the highly, high, highest level of the favor of God. Think about this. I keep thinking about the builders are building again because Nehemiah, to me, is the greatest builder because I want you to write this down unless you're driving or something. We're going to see in a minute. When he came back to the king, he asked for the king's letters to get him through to Judah, back to Jerusalem because he had miles to grow, or go across the Middle East. He asked for the king's letter, and then he was bold enough to ask for the king's timbers. He had to rebuild, I'm going to say this again in a minute. He had to rebuild the gates of Jerusalem. He needed timbers. I mean, this is the same today, wood. He said, if you don't mind, king, Carla's going to read it in a second. If you'd give me the king's timbers from the king's forest. And then the third thing he asked for was the king's horsemen to pro provide pro protection and the wagons to carry the timbers back. So listen really close, because this is what you have in Messiah Jesus. You have, he asked for the king's letters, which are written on the inside of your heart. Stay with me. Don't miss the revelation. He asked for the king's timbers, which we do. We have the king's forest and his resources are available. That is the provision of the Lord. And then just bear with me on this. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty. We're not talking about that child's fable. He asked the real king for the king's horsemen. Letters, timbers, and the horsemen. This is what you have. This is a parallel to what we have in the New Testament. In King G we have the king's letters inscribed on our hearts. This is a great revelation. And then... To what? top it all off, he brought the people together when he got there. The people of God in families, he brought them together to do the building. And Carla's going to go right for it. it it's at the beginning, uh, at the very bottom of the page, isn't it? Is it finished there? <laughs> I can't see the bottom of that page. Yeah. Carla, the spirit and the desire to build. So check this out. And then I'm going to sing it somehow. But look at this right here. What happened? The spirit and desire to build. The reasons to rebuild. The city of my father's tombs. And I said to the king, if it please the king, let letters be given me for the governors of the provinces beyond the river that they may allow me to pass through until I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me the king's timbers to make beams for the gates of the fortress, which is by the temple house for the wall of the city. and the house to which I will go. And the king granted them to me because the good hand of my God was on me. Then I came to the governors of the provinces beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent with me officers of the army and horsemen. And because of the good hand of God, which is on you right now, the builders, 
are going to start building again. I use this stream today to get us ready for the profoundness of the book of Nehemiah. The king granted his letters and the timbers and the horsemen to me because the good hand of God, we're going to sing it, is on me. Oh, the good hand of God and his favor is on me. Good hand of God and your favor. I know it's on me. The good hand of God is on our lives, and the builders are building again. What? The builders are building again. The builder, we're going to be like a bunch of Nehemiahs running all over the planet. The builders are building. Oh, the builders are building again. Because here's the three things you got. You got the king's letters. You got the king's timbers. And the king's horsemen are riding with you. Angels all around. Oh, we, we got King Jesus' letters. We've got King Jesus' timbers. And... We've got the king's horsemen all around us here. Yeah. The good hand of God was on me, Nehemiah said. The good hand of the Lord Jesus, the builder. You're going to start building again. The builders are building again. The builders were building. No more stoppages. No more hard circumstances. No more artificial ceilings over our head. I say the builders are building again. Yeah, the builders, we're building again. Yeah, the builders, we started building again. horsemen are riding with me. Check it. Get it? We've got the king's letters. We've got the king's timbers. We've got the king's horsemen and there's angels all around me. King's letters. Get it in your spirit. The king's timbers from the, the resources of the Lord. The king's horsemen all around us. We've got the king's horsemen and their angels helping us, my God. For the builder, the builders are building again. The builders are building. We're going to get it in the book. We'll see it all the way through the 13 chapters of the book of Nehemiah. Hallelujah. This is the prophetic release of the Lord, the builders are building again, and there's no stopping us now, there's no stopping us now, he said, I have released the fullness of my provision, my prosperity, and my promises, if you want to be a, if you start building in the name of Jesus, if you want to start, he said, I'm going to start releasing. up. This is a point of obedience. He says, at your point of obedience where you start building again, what's going to happen is you're going to see the greater resources, promises, provision, and prosperity of my hand and my heart to you. And if you want an encouragement, just look and see what my tan Matthias is doing in Uganda, what he's building oh, there. That's right shows us pictures. I mean, just go on there and go, this boy, what he's doing, it's amazing. And uh, he's just doing it by faith and God is providing along the way. So we just just look at Matan and if you can help him, help him. But just be encouraged that something is possible in the Lord. And this was awesome. This was different than what we normally do. And I'm thinking just that we could start books with, 
you know, what is the powerful principles we're getting? In this case, it was hooked to a prophetic word for me. The builders, we're going to start building again. Nothing's going to stop us now in Jesus' name. So on Monday, I'll go ahead and kick it with chapter one. We'll do multiple translations and get ready for your mind to be blown that Nehemiah, God bless him. Don't you want to interview people on the other side over in eternity? I'm going to go, Nehemiah, what are you thinking, man? He, he had this six-figure in, in, income of being the king's cupbearer. He was checking for poison, and the king's drinking his food. How about that job? <laughs> it, it doesn't make any difference how much it pays. So we're, we're going to get schooled, on, and we're going to get after building. You're going to see new things that we can just enter right into by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, and one other note, I was at Holly that asked, we're not doing Saturday night at 6 p.m. anymore. We've rolled that into 7 p.m. on uh, Friday night. We do a live service uh, that goes from 7 to 8.30 every Friday night with Rick, blessed to teach. How do they get to that location? Or we can put up a link for that. But uh, I was at Holly that asked who asked about it, huh? Carly. Yeah. 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 So we're still doing Monday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. We're doing Wednesday night at G-Hop, and I know a lot of people can't uh, get to that. That's fine, or can't be a part of that. As they turn that time back to 7 o'clock. Yeah, uh, yeah, because that's heaven. So, but Saturday night, we, we rolled that into, uh, with our new friend Rick Renee, uh, blessed to teach where we're doing a live service with sermonettes and basically just river flow in the Holy Spirit. So make sure you get out to that. Matt's working on putting that up so you guys can be a part of that on Friday night. Yeah, look into his blessed to teach neighborhood where they're trying to put together uh, groups and uh, for discipling one another. Is, it's that, do, is that dot com or what? What? It, how do they get to his site? By the way, I think Matt's doing it. Okay, Matt's going to put it up for you guys and listen, man. Uh, <laughs> Sharada, she said, yes, Carrie Chow's building a house of worshipers. Absolutely. So start building. You guys take this. When I'm live at a church on, on a Sunday morning or Saturday night, I say, now listen, mark it on your calendar. You're going to build something. Pray a day or two. And then I don't care if it's in the natural, in your soul, some creative or something in the, um, uh, yeah, B, uh, yeah, the B2T clips, Beata said, Browning, b 2 B2T clips are on YouTube, but that we go live on Friday night, 7 o'clock. He Central. also, on Monday at uh, 10 to 7, Rick goes, uh, Rick goes live from 6 to 7 with interviews and things, but at 10 to 7, Kent goes live with him front stage to do worship, and then we go backstage to minister to those that are in that community. That's on Monday at 7 and Thursdays at 7. All right, man, God bless you. What a great day. And we will kick it up big time and cruise through. I, I will never forget this year, you guys. We did Book of Hebrews through the summer, which stunned. I mean, there was stunning stuff in there when you really look at each, each verse. Then we did the Book of Romans. I mean, huge with the Apostle Paul, his heart for the Roman believers. And it's been a great ride. And then first of the year, we'll see what the Lord says and stuff. But we love you guys. To be continued, it's never goodbye. It's be continued. All right, we'll see you next time. God bless. Peace. Shalom.